Welcome back. In today's lessons, we're going to start to tackle model factories and something called database seeders. As the name would suggest, a model factory simply is a representation of fake data that gets created for a specific model. The example of that would be a lot of times you just need some fake data in your database to be able to make your designs work, to make your development easier, and all of that. Up until this point, we've gone into the database and added that manually or had to create customers, we had to create companies, all of that from scratch. But throughout development, you really don't care to have any real data, but rather it would be easy to have a single command for us to fill our database with data. So that's what we're going to do today. Now Laravel actually ships with a model factory for the user. So let's take a look at that first and then let's create our own. So let's pull up the user factory class. And here it is. This is what a model factory looks like. So this is a factory defined for a user. And then we are assigning each of the fields to a particular data. So let's go through those very quickly. If we pull up the create users table migration, we see that we have, of course, an ID, a name, an email, a timestamp for verified ad, and a password. Remember, all of this ships with Laravel, so we did not create any of this. This is the very first time that we've actually seen this migration. So we have all of these fields, and then we have corresponding faker data for each of those fields. Now, without getting too deep into faker, faker is actually a PHP package that ships with Laravel to help us generate fake data of all sorts. So we have a name in which we're creating a fake name. We have an email where we're creating a unique safe email, meaning it doesn't have any of the special characters. And then we're creating a verified at timestamp using the now, which is just a helper function for carbon. And then we're assigning a password. Notice here, this is actually a string literal, not a faker data. So it will always equal to password. That way we're able to log in as that user. And then as a remember token, we just have a random string 10 characters long. Okay, so how would we run this factory? So to run a factory currently, let's bump into Tinker. PHP, Artisan Tinker. And inside of this, the first thing I want to do is I want to show you what I actually have in the database. So I can show you how we're going to change it. So let's say user, fetch me all of my users, but go ahead and plug their name. All I want to see is the name of our users. So now we see we have two users inside our database. We have test user and new user. All right, so now let's see how we can use this factory to whip up more users. So to use a factory, let's use the factory helper function. And then inside of there, we have to give it the path to the class that we're trying to create a factory for. So in our case, of course, we know it's the user class. So we need to do backslash app backslash user colon colon class. And then as a second argument, you can pass a number. We'll check it out in just a second. But we're just going to tag on another call to the create method. So what are we doing here? We are creating some users using a factory. And then we're going to persist them to the database. Now, if you wanted three users, for example, you could actually just put as a second argument a three. So comma three. This will create three users. If you leave that blank and you don't pass in a second argument like so, then you only create one user. Let's do that now. So there we go. Looks like I created one user. Let's go back a couple of clicks and pluck all of the names of our users. And now we see that we have three users. Notice up here, we only had the first two. And now we've added this new Dr. Miles. Where is this coming from? Again, that's coming from Faker. Faker is faking all this data for us. So it's giving us random strings to use. Let's add another one. And this time, let's maybe create three of them. And then let's run that command one more time where we pluck all of the names. And sure enough, we have a bunch of users inside our database. That's pretty cool. Now let's create our own. And what I'm thinking is we've had these companies and we've had to manually create these companies. Wouldn't it be easier for us to have a factory for the company? I think so. So let's check out the command PHP artisan and let's go up to make factory. So make factory. Let's do PHP artisan help make factory. And so we see that it takes an argument of name and then we can pass in a model, the model that we're trying to create. OK, PHP artisan make factory. And then obviously as a model, 
we want the company model. Oh, it says I'm missing the name, of course. Let's back up and let's do PHP Artisan Make Factory and let's just call it Company Factory. Of course, we need a name for our actual class and then the model is going to be company. All right, so that's the full command there. There we go. Let's check out PHP Storm. And if we scroll up inside this database directory, which we have not explored yet, this is the first time we're going to be exploring it, inside this database, there is a factories directory. And inside factories, we do have company factory. Cool. So we've created our own factory. So now we need to define the fields. The easiest way for this is just to pull up the company migration. So let's pull up companies migration. And all we need is a phone and a name. All right, let's do that now. So let's say a name. And we know that we can use this faker for a name. And then we need a phone. So let's pull up faker again. And let's get a phone number. So we have a name and a phone number. So now we can generate companies as well. So now for name, this will actually give us a name of a person. However, if you said company, that'll give us the name of a company, something that would really be more company appropriate. And that's it. Our factory is good to go. Let's see what we have to do to actually use this factory. Let's go back to PHP Artisan Tinker. And let's see what we have in the company database first. So company, all, and I want to pluck their name. That way we get a list of names of companies. And all we have is this ABC company. Okay, let's whip up a new company using a factory. So factory, backslash app, backslash company, colon, colon, class. And then let's call the create method on it. And sure enough, we have a company now. All right, let's run that company pluck one more time. And now we have two companies. And if we switch over to Chrome and try to create a new customer, we do see we have that company there. Let's create 10 companies now. How will we do that? Remember, as a second argument, you can do 10. And now we've created 10 companies. Let's see what that looks like. There we go. Look at all these companies we have here. So we can easily generate random data for testing purposes and for development purposes very, very quickly. So this is very cool. Now, alongside with model factories, we're going to talk about database seeders. So in the next episode, we're going to create a database seeder so we can create an entire world for our application in a single command. Stay tuned.